Hi patrons, so we said that we would be testing out some traditional martial arts techniques that may seem a little bit weird or impractical to find out if we can find any practical use for them. So today I have three traditional techniques from Shaolin Long Fist Kung Fu um, that I think I found the purpose for. So the first one is probably the most iconic technique out of Shaolin Long Fist. In fact, if you just Google Shaolin Long Fist, you'll get a lot of images of people standing like this. I'll do it for another angle. So the leg is up, the opposite side arm is extended, and it looks like a good way to just be knocked off balance. But like many of the stances that we see in traditional martial arts, it's not meant to be static. You're not supposed to stand there. You're not doing Karate Kid, okay? What you're doing here is pushing off with the rear leg, closing the distance, and thrusting the fist out. So the way that this works, as you can see, I'm well outside of my effective range, okay? But from a ready stance, and then I use the long fist technique, and I get a lot of power, <laughs> as you can see, obviously. Now, for comparison, this is my standard, and I'm southpaw, so my standard jab and cross look like this. Okay, that's a jab. And here's a cross, here's a power punch. Now, compare that with the long fist punch. Remember, again, I'm outside of my range. Okay. Because you're basically falling into the punch. It doesn't take a lot of effort for me to do that, and I get a lot of reaction. Now, the second one is very similar to the first. This is going to be, I think it's called climbing the mountain. It's a, it's a, a thrusting punch from a bow stance. Okay, and so with the bow stance, remember, you want to make sure that you don't let the knees go past the toes and you're extending the leg. So again, you're not meant to stand there like that because if you just stand here like this, if you're being attacked by more than one person, you're bound to have that knee snapped in half and that's not a good thing. Okay, but again, if we remember that it's dynamic and not static, then we find ourselves doing the same thing as before, closing the distance. And this time, instead of striking high, as we did with the first technique, which would be a punch to the face or neck, we're going to change levels. So think about the mentality of the other fighter, okay? The other person trying to box you, they're getting ready to hit your face and defend their face, but you're outside of range. They can't hit you, you can't hit them. They think that they're safe. So when you do the bow stance punch, you're dropping the level down to where you would be hitting the solar plexus or the stomach area, an area that they may not be guarding if they're not trained and don't really know what to look for. So, from a ready stance. And again, that didn't take a lot of effort for me. That was just pushing off from my rear leg and striking. Now the last one is going to be similar again to the first, but in this case, instead of punching with the opposite side arm, we're going to punch with the same side arm. And instead of going sideways, twisting the torso, that extra little bit of torque is adding a little more power. This is going to be more of a jab. But again, we're still closing distance, which I think is really probably where Long Fist gets its name. I'm just guessing here, but seeing as how all three of this, these techniques are closing distance and reaching beyond what would be normal punching range seems a fair hypothesis. So there's my effective range. Now I'm outside of that range. I'm just at the edge of my kicking range. I could catch with a toe kick if I really tried. Okay. On guard and again, a fair amount of power probably as much or more than my boxing cross, and I sneak it in there from outside of normal effective range. 
So that's my theory anyway as to how these techniques should work. Um, oh, I forgot one more thing. Just to show how none of these things are meant to be static, because remember, you don't want to be caught stuck on one leg. You can do these things in combination, too. We'll go with the last one since that's the last one we did, huh? So. You see? You can keep hitting. You don't have to just stand there on one leg. You should change it up and keep it dynamic, keep it moving. So, anyway, like I said, those are my theories as to how these techniques should work. Um, hopefully, we've all learned something together here today. And um, if you have any other ideas uh, of techniques that you'd like me to test out or any suggestions of uh, other ways that these techniques could be used, go ahead and comment. Tell me about it. Um, that's what we're here for. So thank you so much for your patronage. Um, share my page. Tell your friends about it. We're going to be doing a lot more of this kind of stuff. I've got some Kyushu Jitsu and Aikido stuff coming up soon. Um, so just stay tuned and uh, let's see what we can do together, okay? Thanks.